The past several videos, we've been doing quite a bit of work in order to lay the foundation to actually solve non-homogeneous equations. This video is going to add the last piece of that process called undetermined coefficients to help us solve these equations. In our previous video, we looked at the general way to solve the homogeneous solution to find the complementary solution to a differential equation that's higher ordered and linear. Now we're going to find a particular solution. Today's question is how do we find a particular solution to our non-homogeneous equations? And there's a couple methods to do this. The way we're going to cover in this course is the method of undetermined coefficients. The idea of undetermined coefficients is we can guess everything except for the coefficient for convenient looking functions. We can guess if the differential equation is equal to a polynomial. A polynomial would be a function such as ax to the n, I'll say a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus and so on down to a sub 1 x to the first plus a sub 0 polynomials. The second case where we can guess is if the function is equal to an exponential. An exponential would be of the form e to the rx, maybe with a constant coefficient out front. The third type we can guess deal with sines and cosines. These are ones where we have maybe a times the cosine of kx. Or maybe it's b times the sine of kx. Sines and cosines we're going to be able to guess with. And the other one we can guess with is any linear combination of the above functions. In other words, we could see a polynomial plus an exponential minus a sign. We can guess what that one's going to look like as well. And the general strategy to our guessing process, as we solve these functions, is first we're going to find the complementary solution which we know is y sub c, of the homogeneous version of the equation. And that homogeneous equation is when it equals 0, ignoring whatever it actually equals. Because we know the general solution is the complementary solution plus the particular solution. So once we have the complementary solution, we're going to guess the particular solution y sub p, at least its form, based on the other side, the side that we ignored for the complementary solution. So for example, if there's a polynomial like 2x plus 3, we could guess that the particular solution is going to be of a very similar form, maybe some ax plus b. If the function is equal to 7e to the 3x, we would guess our particular solution would be exactly the same, just with a different coefficient, a 
e to the 3x. This is why the process is called undetermined coefficients. We're trying to figure out that undetermined coefficient, but the rest we can probably guess. If there was a sine of 2x, y particular, and be careful here, sines, if you remember from our previous videos, come in pairs from complex solutions. So it's a pair of sine plus cosine. So we're going to do a sine of 2x plus b cosine of 2x. Works with polynomials too. If we had 3x squared plus 5, we could guess y particular is going to be a polynomial. And we do need to account for every degree of the polynomial. So just because x is missing does not mean it's missing from our particular solution. So ax squared plus bx plus c would be our guess. If we had 6x squared e to the 4x, then we could guess y particular solution as well. Notice this is similar to the form that we had for repeated roots. So y particular should reflect all the repeated roots. ax squared e to the 4x plus bx e to the 4x plus c e to the 4x, accounting for all three of the repeated roots to build the x squared. If we have a function that's equal to e to the 2x times 4 sine of 3x plus 2 cosine of 3x, we would guess the particular solution would also have the e to the 2x out front times some a sine of 3x plus b cosine of 3x. So you can kind of see how we guess the form based on what it's equal to by just putting a, b, c, d for the coefficient that's undetermined, but the structure and the form seems to be pretty predictable based on the form of what the non-homogeneous differential equation is equal to. Now a couple things to note as we're doing this. The function in green on the right for y particular must be linearly independent. from the terms in y complement. Remember, the first thing we did was we found the complementary solution. Because if we're guessing the form of the particular solution, and one or more of the terms is not linearly independent, then we're going to have to make it linearly independent by multiplying by x to the n as needed. And we'll look at some examples of that here in just a little bit. OK, so now that you've got the form of y particular being linearly independent from y complement, we're ready to calculate derivatives of y particular so that you can solve for those undetermined coefficients, the a, the b, the c, the d, and so on and so forth. Once you've solved for all the a, b, c, d's, you're ready to actually state the final form of y particular and give the solution, I'll say the general solution, the 
that the general solution of y is the complementary solution plus the particular solution. This process is exactly the same on all of the problems that are of the correct form, polynomials, exponentials, sines, and cosines. However, there's a bunch of nuances to it, and the algebra can get kind of ugly. So in this video, I'm going to do more examples than I usually do in my videos, just to make sure we cover lots of different cases and situations. So let's do a handful of examples so we can get good at this process. Let's solve the differential equation y prime prime minus 3y prime minus 4y equals 3x plus 2. Now the first thing we're going to do is solve the homogeneous version. I'm going to pretend it equals 0. If it did equal 0, we could say y prime prime is d squared minus 3d minus 4 equals 0. And then I can factor that to d minus 4, d plus 1. And then I know d equals 4 and negative 1, which means my complementary solution, the solution that spans the null space or solves the homogeneous version of this differential equation, is c1 e to the 4x plus c2 e to the negative x. That's y complement. We need to find y particular. Well, looking at what the function actually equals, 3x plus 2, makes me think it must be ax plus b. The coefficients are undetermined, but the form should be the same as what it equals. I do want to take a moment to look and compare my complementary solution and my particular solution. Make sure all the terms are linearly independent. And e to the 4x, e to the negative x, x to the first, and a constant are all linearly independent. So I'm good to move on to now focus on the left side, y prime prime minus 3y prime minus 4y. That uses a second derivative. So we're going to calculate the first and the second derivatives of my particular solution. The first derivative is just a. The second derivative is 0. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the left side. Notice I've got, forgot the second prime on there. Notice I've got one of the y prime primes negative 3 of the y primes, and negative 4 of the y's. I'm going to multiply those constants by my left sides and put them together to try and build the right side. I should end up with a 3x plus 2 when I'm done with this. Now as I do this, I'm going to notice that when I distribute the 4 the negative 3 and the 1 through, I'm going to end up with some terms that have x's on them and some terms that are constants. In order to make this easier, I'm going to organize my results based on the term. So I'm not going to write the x, I'm just going to put the stuff underneath the x. So when I distribute the negative 4 through, we get negative 4ax, so I'm going to put negative 4a under the x column. I also get negative 4b. That's a constant, so I'll put negative 4b under the constant column. Then I've got negative 3a. That's a constant, so I'll put that under the constant column. And we've got 0. So nothing much happens there. Now what I do know is that the x column should equal 3x. So if I were to add up the x column, negative 4a should equal 3 of these x's, which means a is 3 over negative 4, or negative 3 fourths. I also know if I add up the constant column, it should equal the constant 
from my equation, 2. So negative 3a minus 4b should equal 2. Well, I already know a is negative 3 fourths. And if I multiply, that becomes 9 fourths minus 4b equals 2. Subtracting 9 fourths from both sides gives me negative 1 fourth. And dividing by negative 4, b is equal to a positive 1 16th. So that tells me that my particular solution for y that a plus b x plus b, y particular is equal to a negative 3 fourths x plus b, which is 1 over 16. I now have my particular solution for y. So we can combine our complementary solution and our particular solution to get the general solution to my differential equation. The complementary solution, c1 e to the 4x plus c2 e to the negative x, plus the particular solution, which is negative 3 fourths x plus 1 over 16. And that is my general solution to my differential equation with constant coefficients particularly a non-homogeneous version of it. Okay, there were lots of steps in there, so we're going to do a lot more examples in this video to get us really comfortable with that process. So let's try solving problem number 2, y prime prime minus 4y equals 2e to the 3x. First step is to find the complementary solution. If it equals 0, we would say this is d squared minus 4 equals 0. So we have d plus 2 and d minus 2, which means d is equal to negative 2 and positive 2, and y complement is c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the 2x. That's all review. Now we're going to guess what y particular looks like based on what this function equals. The coefficient's probably different, but the form should be the same. So it's a times e to the 3x. And because my function has a second derivative in it, we're going to also find y prime of p which is 3a e to the 3x, and y double prime particular, which is 9a e to the 3x. Then we can build the equation on the left. We've got 1 of the y double primes, 0 of the y primes, and negative 4 of the y's. So we'll multiply both sides by those constants. And as we do, we'll organize our information in columns based on the terms we have. All of these pretty much line up under e to the 3x. It's going to be some coefficient times e to the 3x. So multiplying through, we've got negative 4a of those e to the 3x. 0, that goes away, and 9a, e to the negative 3x. I know if I add those together, they should give us the other side. So adding those together gives us 5a, which should equal 2 of these e to the 3x's. Dividing both sides by 5, and a is equal to 2 fifths. So now I know my particular solution 
is equal to a, which is 2 fifths, e to the 3x. And I know then my general solution for y is the complementary solution, c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the 2x plus the particular solution, which is 2 fifths e to the 3x. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern and the process we're going through. Let's try one that's a little bit more interesting. Let's do 3y prime prime plus y prime minus 2y equals 2 cosine of 3x. Again, I'm going to first pretend it equals 0 to find the complementary solution that spans the space, the, non, the homogeneous solution. So we have 3d squared plus d minus 2 equals 0. Factoring, we have 3d times d. And if I go 2 and 1, plus 1 minus 2, d is equal to 2 thirds and negative 1. So my complementary solution is c1 e to the 2 thirds x plus c2 e to the negative x. Now we get to guessing the particular solution. Because we have a cosine, and we know sines and cosines come in pairs from complex solutions that also come in pairs, y particular, we would guess, has a different coefficient. We'll call it a cosine of 3x plus b sine of 3x. Then we start building the left side so it is equal to the right side. Of course, I kind of brushed over it this time and last time. We want to make sure all the terms between y particular and y complement are linearly independent. Cosine, sine, e to the 2 thirds x and e to the negative x are all linearly independent. So we can keep going on. The first derivative is going to be negative 3a sine of 3x plus 3b cosine of 3x. The second derivative is going to be negative 9a cosine of 3x minus 9b sine of 3x. Then looking at the left side, I see we've got 3 of the y double primes, 1 of the y primes, and negative 2 of the y partic particulars. Multiplying by those things on each side should equal our right side. Again, as I organize my terms, I see sines and cosines. So let's organize by that. We've got cosine of 3x, and there are some sines of 3x. So when I distribute, we've got negative 2a under cosine of 3x, and negative 2b under sine of 3x. Distributing the 1 through, we've got negative 3a under sine and 3b under cosine. Distributing the 3 through, we've got negative 27a under cosine and we've got negative 27b under sine. If I add all the cosines together, it should equal two cosines. When I add them together, we get 29a plus 3b is equal to the two cosines. When I add all the sines together, we get negative 3a minus 29b 
equals, there's no signs on the right side, so it needs to equal zero. And this gives me two equations and two unknowns that I can solve by either substitution, elimination. I'm going to solve it by matrix. And if you use matrix operations to solve, you'll find out that A is equal to negative 29 over 425, and B is equal to 3 over 425. If you have not taken linear algebra and you want to see how to solve these by matrix, uh, let me know either in my office hour or after class and I can show you how to do these on a matrix really quick. But now that we know A and B, we've now determined our coefficients. We know that Y particular is equal to A, which is negative 29 over 425, cosine of 3X plus b, which is 3 over 425, sine of 3x. And if we know the complementary solution, and we know the particular solution, we can build the general solution by adding them together. c1 e to the 2 thirds x plus c2 e to the negative x minus 29 over 425 cosine of 3x plus 3 over 425 sine of 3x and we've got the solution to our equation. So for all of these, we've kind of glossed over the step where I compare the particular solution to the complementary solution, making sure they're linearly independent. So let's try one where we actually have to take a close look at that to make sure our final general solution gives us linearly independent results. y prime prime minus 4y equals 2e to the 2x. The process should start to be very familiar now. We've got d squared minus 4 equals 0, solving the homogeneous first for the complementary. d plus 2, d minus 2, so d is equal to negative 2 and positive 2, so the complementary solution is c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the 2x. Now we can guess the particular solution based on the form of the, left, of the right side of the equation. We don't know the coefficient, but it should be e to the 2x. But the problem is e to the 2x is not linearly independent from one of our terms in the complementary solution. So that's going to get us in trouble unless we make a minor adjustment. We just multiply by an x in there to make it linearly independent. Then we can run through all the same steps. y prime of p, careful now we have to use the product rule, which is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So a e to the 2x plus 2ax e to the 2x. And then for y double prime, we have 2a e to the 2x plus, we got another product rule, which is going to be 2a e to the 2x plus 4ax e to the 2x. And I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms in the middle. So y double prime particular is equal to 4a e to the 2x plus 4ax e to the 2x. And I'm going to put a little x on the first one so I don't accidentally use that one. That one was simplified. All right, building the left side. We've got one of the y double primes, 
zero of the y primes and negative four of just the y's. So when I multiply on both sides, it should give us the other side. Again, I'm careful not to use the row I simplified. It's going to create extra terms we don't want. As I look at these, I see we've got some x, e to the x terms. But we also have some terms that are just e to the x. So we're going to have two columns for this one. First one's an x e to the x, so we'll go negative 4a. Second one is just 0. The third one, we've got 4a e to the 2x. Oops, I should have 2s in those x's, sorry. So we've got 4a on the e to the 2x. And we've got 4a on the x e to the x. Now, sometimes you notice we get a column that adds up to 0. But that's OK, because if I look at the right side of my equation, there are no x e to the 2x's. So whatever is in that column should equal 0. And sure enough, 0 equals 0. It's true, but completely useless. The other side, though, 4a should equal, we need 2 of these e to the 2x's. So we now know our undetermined coefficient, a is equal to 1 half. So this tells me my y particular is equal to a 1 half x e to the 2x. And so I'm ready to write my general solution for y, which is the complementary solution, c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the 2x plus the particular solution, 1 half x e to the 2x. All right, these are increasing in complexity, but again, I want to do lots of examples to get you really good at this process. So let's try another one. It's example number five. Let's do y double prime plus 4y equals 3x cubed. Well, for the complementary, d squared plus 4 equals 0, which means d equals plus or minus 2i. Subtracting 4 and taking the square root gives us the complex solution. So we know y complement is e to the 0, which is 1, c, forgot my c, c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x. Now that we've got our solution for y complement, we're ready to look at y particular. The coefficient we would expect to be different, so we're going to say a x cubed, but we need to remember that with polynomials we have to account for every degree of the polynomial. So I have to count down and say bx squared plus cx plus d and then see what we get for our derivatives. Of course, I had to check to make sure everything is linearly independent. It is. First derivative is 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. The second derivative is 6ax plus 2b. And then we can build the left side now with one of the second derivatives 0 of the first derivatives, and 4 of just the function. So we'll multiply that 4, 0, and 1 on the left side. And as I do, you'll notice we'll get some x cubed terms, some x squared terms, some x terms, and some constant terms. So this time we're going to have four columns. We have 4ax cubed plus 4b on the x squared, plus 4c on the x, 
plus 4d on the constants. And be careful that c column is not for c's, it's for constants. Multiplying 0 through just makes it go away. And when I multiply 1 through, we got 6a under x and 2b's under constants. And when I look at totaling these, we know that it should total the 3x cubed. So the x cubed column, those four a's, has to equal the 3 of those x cubed, which is nice because I can then see a is 3 fourths. The x squared column, since there's no x squareds, has to equal 0, so b is equal to 0. The x column has 6a plus 4c we know is going to equal 0, which is nice because we already know a is 3 fourths, so 6 times 3 fourths plus 4c should equal 0, which is 9 halves plus 4c equals 0. Subtracting 9 halves from both sides and dividing by 4, c is equal to negative 9 eighths. And on the constants, 4d plus 2b, because there's no constants, must also equal 0. We already know that b equals 0, so 4d equals 0, so d also equals 0. So now when we look at our particular solution, y particular is a, which is 3 fourths x cubed, plus b, which is 0, so the x squared term goes away, plus c, which is negative 9 eighths x, plus d, which is also 0, so it essentially goes away. And now that we have y complement and y particular, we can state that the general solution for y is c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x plus the particular solution of 3 fourths x cubed minus 9 eighths times x. And we've solved the differential equation. Let's try another. Let's solve y prime prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 3e to the negative x minus 10 cosine of 3x. First, solving the homogeneous version, 3 squared, d squared minus 3d plus 2 equals 0. Factoring, that's d minus 2 times d minus 1, so d is equal to 2 and 1. And so for our complementary solution, we get c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 1x. Our new part for today is guessing the particular solution. And notice this time we've got a linear combination of exponentials and cosines. Well, for our particular solution guess, it's going to be a linear combination of the pieces. So for e to the negative x, we're going to have a e to the negative x. And for the cosine of 3x, we'll have b cosine of 3x. And of course, we know sines and cosines come in pairs, so we'll also have c sine of 3x. And then I'll do a quick check to make sure everything's linearly independent. They are. So we'll do the first and second derivatives, because that's what we have in our problem. So the first derivative is negative a e to the negative x minus 3b sine of 3x plus 3c cosine of 3x. 
And the second derivative of y particular is positive a e to the negative x minus 9b cosine of 3x minus 9c sine of 3x. Now building the left side, we've got 1 of the y double primes, negative 3 of the y primes, and 2 of just the y's. So we'll multiply that on both sides to build our function, y particular. As we do that, and I look through this, I see we're going to end up with an e to the negative x column, a cosine of 3x column, and a sine of 3x column. Distributing through then, we end up with 2a times e to the negative x, 2b on the cosine 3x, and 2c's on the sine of 3x. Distributing negative 3 through, we get positive 3a on e to the negative x, positive 9b on the sine of 3x, and negative 9c on the cosine of 3x. Finally distributing 1 through, we get 1a on e to the negative x, negative 9b on the cosine, and negative 9c on the sine. And when we add these columns up, it should equal the right side which means adding the e to the negative 3x's gives me 6a. That has to equal 3, so a must be 1 half. Adding the cosines up, it should equal negative 10. So we've got negative 7b minus 9c equals negative 10. I'm running out of space, so I'll come here and just put it right underneath. Uh, we've got 9b minus 7c, and since there's no signs, that has to equal 0. And again, on this one, I'm going to do a matrix A inverse B to solve, and when I do, I get B equals 7 thirteenths and C equals 9 thirteenths. And so now that I've determined all the coefficients here for number 6, we're ready to say that the particular solution is a 1 half e to the negative x plus b 7 thirteenths cosine of 3x plus c 9 thirteenths sine of 3x. And so when we put it all together, we get our y, our general solution, c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the x plus 1 half e to the negative x plus 7 thirteenths cosine of 3x plus 9 thirteenths sine of 3x. and we have our solution. Let's try one more full example and then I'll do a partial example after that. Let's do number seven here. Let's do one with a third derivative in it. Third derivative of y plus the second derivative of y is equal to three e to the x plus four x squared. Solving the homogeneous is d cubed plus d squared equals 0. d squared times d plus 1 equals 0. And so d equals 0. Careful, that's a double root. And negative 1. So I know y complement is c1 times e to the 0, which is 1. Plus, because that's a double root, we're going to do c2x e to the 0, which is 1, plus c3 
e to the negative x. Now we can guess the form of y particular. From the 3 e to the x, I would guess there's some type of a e to the x. Plus, from the 4x squared, there must be some bx squared, but then I have to count down, plus cx plus d. But the problem I run into now is the d is not independent from the c1. Those are both constants. And the x to the first is not depend independent from the x to the first. So we're going to have to group those together, everything that came from the 4x squared, and we need to make it linearly independent. We might try to multiply by an x, but then the last term becomes dx. And you notice that's not independent from the x and y complement. So we're going to have to actually multiply by x squared to give us y particular is a e to the x plus bx to the fourth plus cx cubed plus dx squared. And now I can see that each of those terms are in fact linearly independent from the y complement. Now I can start calculating derivatives. We need to go to the third derivative because there's a third derivative of y in our problem. So we've got y prime is a e to the x plus 4bx cubed plus 3cx squared plus 2dx. Y particulars second derivative is a e to the x plus 12bx squared plus 6cx plus 2d. And y particulars third derivative is a e to the x plus 24bx plus 6c. And now we can start to build the left side. I see there is one of the y cubes, one, not cubes, sorry, one of the third derivatives, one of the second derivatives, and none of the other two, which is going to be nice because most of these terms are going to go to zero. One of the second derivative and one of the third derivative. Looking at what terms that's going to give us, I see that's going to give us an e to the x. I also see that's going to give us some, let's see, what's the highest exponent we'll end up with? x squared looks like it's the highest exponent because when we multiply by 0, the first derivative and just the y's will go away. So x squared is going to be the highest we get. So I'm going to put x squareds here. And I'm going to use columns this time. We've also got x's and we've got constants. So distributing the 1 through, we've got 1a on the e to the x. 12b on the x squared, 6c on the x, and 2d on the constants. Distributing the 1 through, we get 1a on the e to the x, 24b's on the x's, and 6c's on the constants. And these should solve very nicely. We've got two a's. So we know that needs to equal the other side, which has three of the e to the x's. So a is three halves. For the 12 b's on the x squared, we know we want to end up with 4 x squared. So b is equal to 1 third. When we add up the x's, 6c plus 24b needs to equal 0 because there's no x's. We already know what b is. b is 1 third, which is nice because that reduces down to 8. So I'll subtract 8 and divide by 6 to get negative 4 thirds for c. Then I know 2d plus 6c needs to also equal 0 because there's no constants on the right side. 
I already know what C is. C is negative 4 thirds, which is nice because that reduces to 8. So we have negative 8. I'll add 8 to both sides, and D is equal to 4. So going back to my original Y particular, we said Y particular was equal to A, or 3 halves e to the x plus b, which we now know is 1 third x to the fourth, plus c, which is negative 4 thirds x cubed plus d, which is 4 x squared. And now we've got our particular solution. From earlier, we've got our complementary solution. And while I can't fit it all on one screen, we end up with y equals c1 plus c2x plus c3e to the negative x plus the particular solution, which is 3 halves e to the x plus 1 third x to the fourth minus 4 thirds x cubed plus 4x squared. And that beautiful expression is the solution to our differential equation. All right, I do want to set up one more problem. We're not going to solve this last one all the way out, just because I think you've seen the process enough times. But I do want to find just the form of the particular solution. So we're not going to actually solve it. We're just going to find the form with A, B, C, D stuff in it. So our function is going to be, our differential equation is going to be the third derivative of y plus 9 times the first derivative of y is equal to x sine x plus x squared e to the 2x. Well, you might be tempted to jump right to the particular solution. But if you do that, you might miss that it's not linearly independent from the complementary solution. So we do need to find the complementary solution, which comes from d cubed plus 9d equals 0. Factor out a d, and we get d squared plus 9 equals 0. So d is equal to 0 and plus or minus 3i. So y complement is equal to c1 e to the 0, which is 1, plus, from complex numbers, we're going to have e to the 0, which is 1, cosine of 3x plus the sine of 3x. All right, now that we've got our complementary solution, we're ready to guess at our particular solution. From the x sine x, we see that there is a independence establishment by multiplying by that x. So yes, we've got ax sine x and its partner bx cosine x. But we also need to drop the x out because we count down all the exponents. We also have a c sine x plus d cosine x. Similarly, for the x squared part, we're going to have to count down for it too. So we're going to have an x squared, probably need an e in front of it, e x squared e to the 2x plus f x e to the 2x plus g, finally, just e to the 2x. So notice we had to count down on the exponents to make sure we covered all the possibilities. Now I do want to cross-check this with the complementary solution. It is linearly independent. You might be tempted to say, well, what about cosine x and cosine 3x? Are those linearly independent? It turns out they are, in fact, and you can test that by using the Ronskian. It would be a good exercise to do on your own. But this y particular is, in fact, 
the correct form then, because it's linearly independent, the correct form of the particular solution to our differential equation. We're not going to go through all the work to solve that. This video has gone on long enough with lots of examples, but again, I wanted to cover lots of different cases of this one process. So now it's your turn to fly solo and practice some of these. Let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you in class.